There are lots of videos on the internet about how to calculate the mechanical advantage of pulley systems where the person doing the hauling is standing on the ground and pulling on a rope to lift the load. That's in the example on the right side of the page here. Uh, there's a simple set of rules for calculating the mechanical advantage of those kinds of systems and those rules are explained in detail in many different textbooks and YouTube videos. But where it gets confusing is when you try to apply those rules to moving rope systems, which are mechanical advantage systems where climbers use pulley systems to pull themselves upward into trees or sideways within or between trees, like this example here. This, this situation is different because instead of a ground person pulling on the rope, the climber is hauling on the rope to pull the upper anchor towards, uh, towards him as he ascends. This means that Unlike a hauler standing on the ground, the climber is always reeving to advantage as he pulls the anchor pulley in the tree closer to him. What I mean by reeving to advantage is that the person doing the hauling is pulling away from the load when he pulls on the rope, so that the force exerted on the leg of rope between the climber's hand and the first pulley in the system counts as one unit of mechanical advantage. In contrast, in a hauling system, where the person on the ground is reeving to disadvantage, or in other words, pulling uh, away from the anchor and towards the load, the first leg of the system in this system doesn't count in the calculation of mechanical advantage. So this leg right here wouldn't count. It simply redirects the force. So if you compare any two pulley systems that have the same pulley configuration, the climbing system will always have a mechanical advantage that is one greater than the hauling system where the hauler is pulling down to haul the load upward. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you four different examples of hauling systems and climbing systems and show you how to calculate the mechanical advantage of each one. And what I mean by a climbing system versus a hauling system is where the climber is pulling himself upward versus a system where a hauler is standing on the ground and pulling a load upwards. I use a method referred to as the T method to calculate the mechanical advantage of both types of systems. In calculating mechanical advantage, T is equal to the force required to move the load uh, in a pulley system. And by summing the T values in each leg of a pulley system, you can determine the mechanical advantage of the system and the load placed on the anchor of the system. If you don't know about the T method, you should learn it because it's often the only way to calculate mechanical advantage in complex pulley systems. In all the examples I'm going to show you, I'll make the simplifying assumption that there isn't any friction in the system, which of course isn't true in real life, but we can worry about that later. The most common example of a moving rope system used by tree climbers is where the climber attaches one end of the rope to his saddle, as in this example here, and runs the rope, the other end of the rope, up and through a pulley or set of rings and then back down to a friction device on his saddle over here. He then climbs up the tree while pulling down on the rope and capturing his progress with some type of friction device that's attached to his saddle. In the hauling system in this picture, the rope runs from the hauler up to a pulley and down to a load on the opposite side. The pulley doesn't move relative to the hauler, so it doesn't create any mechanical advantage. The hauler is reaving to disadvantage, pulling away from the pulley and towards the load. So the leg of rope between the hauler and the pulley, that's this leg right here, doesn't create any mechanical adva advantage. It just redirects the force. So the mechanical advantage of this system is equal to T. Uh, so the mechanical advantage is 1 to 1. In this system, the force exerted on the, on the uh, anchor is 2T, or 2 times the climber's weight. Okay, now look at the figure on the left side of the page. This system has the same pulley configuration as the hauling system, but in this case, the climber is reaving to advantage as he pulls the anchor in the tree closer to him. As it moves towards the climber, the pulley creates mechanical advantage, which is T plus T equals 2T, or 2 to 1 mechanical advantage. This means that in order to move upward, the climber only has to apply a force equal to one half of his body weight, because each leg of the rope in the system is supporting half his weight. So T in this case is equal to one half of the climber's weight. And the force exerted on both the anchor and the climber is equal to 2T, which is equal to the climber's weight. Okay, so here's a slightly more complicated example. Both systems are identical, except that in one system the climber is being hauled aloft 
by someone on the ground, and in the other system, the climber is pulling himself aloft. In the hauling system, the hauler is reeving to disadvantage or away from the anchor and towards the climber. So this leg of the system right here doesn't contribute to mechanical advantage. It just redirects the force. The mechanical advantage of the system overall is equal to T plus T equals 2T, or 2 to 1. So the force required to haul the climber upward, that's equal to T, is one half of the climber's weight. And the force exerted on the anchor is 3T, which is one and a half times the climber's weight. In the climbing system on the left, the climber is reading to advantage as he hauls the anchor towards himself. And the force generated on the anchor and the climber is equal to T plus T plus T equals 3T. So the, so the mechanical advantage of this system is 3 to 1. Assuming no friction in the system, the climber only has to pull down with a force equal to one-third of his body weight to ascend. So T in this system is equal to one-third of the climber's weight, and the force exerted on the anchor and the climber is equal to 3T, which equals the climber's weight. Okay, here's the third example. The hauling system on the right is a complex pulley system in which one of the pulleys is creating mechanical advantage as it moves towards the load. The hauler is reading to disadvantage, so the mechanical advantage of the system is equal to 2T plus 1T is 3T, or 3 to 1. This leg over here doesn't contribute because all it does is redirect the force. The force exerted on the anchor up top here is equal to 4T, or 1 and 1 third times the climber's weight. In the climbing system on the left side of the page, the climber is reaving to advantage as he pulls the two pulleys towards him, and the mechanical advantage is T plus T plus 2T, or 4 to 1. To lift himself upward, the climber has to pull with a force equal to one quarter of his body weight, and the force on both the anchor and the climber is equal to 4T, which again is equal to the climber's weight. Okay, one more example and then we're done. In this, in this case, we again have two systems that are the same except that the hauler is supplying the force in one system and the climber is supplying the force in the other. In the hauling system, the hauler is, again is reaving to disadvantage, so the mechanical advantage of the system is equal to T plus T plus 3T is 5T. So T is equal to one-fifth of the climber's weight and the force exerted on the anchor up top here is 6T, or 1 and 1 fifth times the climber's weight. In the climbing system on the left, the climber is reaving to advantage as he pulls the two upper pulleys closer to him. So the mechanical advantage in this system is equal to T plus T plus T plus 3T is 6T. The mechanical advantage again is 6 to 1. And the force exerted on both the anchor and the climber is 6T, which again is equal to the climber's weight. So there are several take-home lessons from these examples. The first is that if you want to calculate the mechanical advantage of a moving rope climbing system, you need to do it from the perspective of the climber, where the climber is the anchor and is reaving to advantage as he hauls the, uh, upper, the anchor pulley towards himself. So the climber becomes the anchor, and the tree becomes the load that is moving towards the climber. This may seem a little bit counterintuitive or odd at first, but that's how the climbing system is functioning to create mechanical advantage. The second take home is that if a climbing system and a hauling system have the same pulley configuration, and the hauling system consists of a person standing on the ground and reaving to disadvantage, the hauling system will always have a mechanical advantage that is one less than the climbing system. And finally, in a climbing system, the force exerted on, on the top anchor and on the climber will always be equal to the climber's weight, regardless of the pulley configuration. In contrast, in a hauling system, the load on the anchor and the gear depends on the mechanical advantage of the pulley system, the weight of the load, and whether the hauler is reading to advantage or disadvantage. So that's it in a nutshell. It's not complicated, but very few videos on mechanical advantage tell you how to calculate the mechanical advantage of moving rope climbing systems. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.